Will the fans in Wichita witness PBA history? North Duke seeks three majors in a row as we begin the 50th season of PBA action. It all began in 1958 when Eddie Elias gathered a group of bowling's best to create the PBA. Jim McKay here back at Paramus, New Jersey, and one final berth in the PBA National Invitation Bowling Tournament still up for grabs. Hurry up! He's got it! PBA's history has been defined by its characters and legends, but what separates them are the performances at the sport's major championships. Today's pros will need more than luck to secure a spot alongside the greats. Whether you're a living legend or a legend in the making, their performances in majors will define their place in history. The golden anniversary season of the PBA begins now on ESPN. Uh, I'm just going to give the money to my wife and I'm going to hug, uh, hug this trophy to death. Countryside of Kansas is serene and beautiful, but inside Wichita, Kansas, one of the great American bowling cities, the action is getting hot and heavy. We welcome you to ESPN's live coverage of the PBA World Championship. This is the first of four majors this season. I'm Rob Stone, and we welcome you to the beginning of the 50th season of the PBA and all season long we're going to be celebrating the great talents and moments in this sport but we're also going to use the golden anniversary season to spring forward a new look for the PBA this season new tournaments new formats new themes every single week from plastic balls to oil patterns to how shots and we begin conveniently enough with a major and a chance for a major breakthrough for Norm Duke. He has the opportunity today to become the first PBA bowler to win three consecutive major tournaments. Joining me this season again, a young man who won this tournament back in 1987 as a fresh faced middle hair parting, I believe necklace wearing 24 year old 13 time tour titleist Randy Peterson back for his eighth year calling PBA action. I can never get enough of watching some of your old video, my friend. Good to be back with you here again. And we focus on today's main story, Norm Duke, looking for three majors in a row. Hey, help us put this in perspective. Well, it's never been done in the history of the PBA. Uh, only a handful of players have ever won back-to-back -back majors. And when I won my major championship, when this tournament here, I had to beat three Hall of Famers. So it's a really difficult tournament to win. If you look at some of the names that have won this event over the years, the first name that comes to mind is Earl Anthony, who won this event six times. So the players that win this event, a lot of Hall of Famers, a lot of great champions, very difficult tournament to win. It was a difficult season for Norm Duke last year, really turned it around about the last month and a half by winning the last two majors. Yeah, and you know, when Norm was left for dead, he was outside of the exempt line. Norm Duke turns it around in one week in Indianapolis by winning this event. And then just a couple of weeks later in New Jersey, Norm Duke doing what only one other player has ever done, and that's capturing the Grand Slam. He wins his first U.S. Open, and he does it by making the tough bucket to spare the 10th frame and beat Mika Koivuniemi. Take a look at Norm's resume through the years, and uh, he is a no-brainer Hall of Famer. Led the tour in earnings last season and only bowled about half of the events. Well, Norm always has a big following on the road, but he may be matched and outdone today by local product Sean Rash, who grew up here, lives here, bowled for Wichita State University. He told us yesterday he thinks probably about half the crowd he will know personally. And let's not forget that Sean Rash is undefeated on television. 7-0 in his career on television, one win shy of tying George Blanham III's record for most consecutive wins to start a career on television. Sean Rash to begin the 50th season of the PBA Tour. Let's try that again from the top. 
And it our is the 50th first buck. That's one. I don't get a buy for the first one of the year. That'd be a pretty strong, pretty good athlete to do this with a 16 pound bowling ball. Is that nerves? I think it's a little nerves and a lot of anxiety. And maybe the fact that he's bowling that man. It was worth the wait. Tremendous shot thrown by Sean Rash to start this match. Now Norm Duke from Claremont, Florida. Win today would be his sixth major title, tying him for fifth most in PBA history with Don Carter. We're seeing multiple angles played on this world championship oil pattern. You see how they stack up in our big picture here. Norm Duke really dominated, especially in match play, out averaging Sean Rash by 10 pins a game. And you can see the low number of match play games that they had to compete in this week, and that's because they both were seeded into the Super 16 round. So the first spare opportunity of the afternoon is Norm leaves the number four. And again, Rob, just touching a, a little bit on the oil pattern this week, you're going to see multiple angles. Norm Duke played out once he got into match play. The majority of the players played in or left of the track or the worn area, left of second arrow. Just the World Championship oil pattern, the only time it will be used all season. So Duke takes a seat, and the local product, Sean Rash, steps up. Won the 07 USBC Masters at Miller Park in October for his first career major title. It was also the first domestic event of the year last year, just like this one is as well. God damn. Again. Now, is that Couldn't slide thumb? Is that, slide that shoes? Ah, it'd be an expensive day. Well, that looked like it was a slide issue. He's going back to the brush to brush his shoe. Uh, I oh, still wow. think there's a lot of nerves there, uh, maybe a little uh, indec indecision going on right now in mentally as far as how to play the lanes. Sean is playing the outside part of the lane. He can play multiple angles. I'm not so sure he's feeling real comfortable. Who needs to be comfortable if he can get back-to-back -back jacks in a world championship? Forget comfort, it's overrated, Randy. Well, apparently, uh, just keep balking and, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, it's gonna, be an ex now. it's gonna be an expensive day for oh. him uh, because of the fines that he'll incur, but um, yeah, those two shots there were pretty spectacular. As we mentioned, a lot of family and friends here in attendance. Nerves. Pretty impressive start for Sean Rash. Played the extreme deep sit inside part of the lane during qualifying, and now you can see that he's playing right of second arrow. Again, showing his versatility. Rash up 20. Here's Duke working off a nine spare. Well, Rob, I'm not so sure he's dialed in. The last shot he threw, he left a four pin on the left lane. He gets a trip four here. You look at all three of Sean Rash's strikes, they're all deep in the one three pocket. Bad enough, I know it. His 100th career singles television appearance today. His fifth world championship televised appearance, second in 91, fourth in 97, and then won it in 2000 and 2008.
that was better, absolutely. The net might just be a slight adjustment off of the high shot leaving the four pin. Norm Duke makes adjustments on the fly. Here's how Rash qualified. Getting through Michael Fagan in the round of 8-4-2. Rash lives 4.7 miles from this facility. Again, three it's times. It's going to be a long show. Sponsor, there's anything about a Bach? Oh, this is just bizarre. But it has not affected his score line at all. Three frames, three strikes. And that's a great shot again, and, and Sean's going to have to keep doing that because right now he's stuck about $1,100 just in fines. Remember, we have a shot clock out here, and you have to get the shot off within 24 seconds. Um, so the first defense is a $100 fine, and each offense after that is $500. Now, this is not a psychological attack approach to go after Norm Duke with these problems that he's having. Absolutely not. This is all Sean Rash and just getting his feet underneath him, feeling that slide properly, and having everything feel just right. Well, he's been perfect up until this point right here. And you can see on this shot, he comes up and out of it a little early. Looks like he wrenched that shot or just got a little bit too much hand in it, which makes the ball go left. And fortunate for Sean Rash, he only leaves the six pin. Picks up his first spare of the afternoon. So four strikes and three balks. You missed your opportunity. You had a four-bagger there. Why? What are they called? Four-bagger. Oh, yeah. There's Duke looking for three in a row. And finding it. And another trip forward. And we showed you the graphic on how Norm Duke got here. Again, he was seated just like Sean Rash. But Norm took on two southpaws in Mike Scroggins and Parker Bone the third. And any time you put Norm Duke on one pair of lanes with a southpaw, Norm's going to have the entire right side of the lane to himself, and he's the master at setting up and creating his own shot. Both these bowlers went unbeaten on television last season. If he can get a strike here, he will take the lead in the sixth. And getting back to what I just mentioned about Norm Duke bowling against the Southpaws and having that right side to himself, that not being the case in this match against Sean Rash. Not to mention the fact that Sean is a very high rev player. Norm's shot is now going to change a lot more drastic than it has in any other match he's bowled this week. He had a chance to take the lead. Converts the difficult spare pickup. Is down 12. When we return, we'll tell you about Duke's dramatic run at the end of last season and how it affected Randy Peterson's family time. The Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour on ESPN is brought to you by Lumber Liquidators. Hardwood flooring for less. By Denny's, where America's favorite breakfast is now available to go. Real breakfast 24-7. By Geico. 15 minutes could save 15% on your car insurance. Visit Geico.com. And by Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA. Welcome you back to Wichita. On your left there, Fred Schreier, the CEO and commissioner of the PBA. On the right, Tom Clark, vice president and COO. Those two have been very busy this offseason coming up with some new 
attacks for the PBA, and there's some, some Japanese fans behind him. Uh, I speak fluent Japanese, Randy. The translation of that is Randy, super hot American Peterson. Thank you, Rob. You're super welcome. <laughs> Here's a look at Norm Duke, down 12, as Sean Rash will step up to finish his effort here in the sixth. Started with four strikes and then a spare. All right, you wanted history today. You got a chance for it. Well, that was one of the fastest pocket 710s you'll see, and only three players have made it on television in the history of the PBA. Mark Roth did in 1980, John Mazza and Jess Dayrick, the last to convert the 7-10 split. If anybody can make the 7-10 split on television, Sean Rash can. Hasn't been done since 91. Whoa, boy. Boom. Here it comes. Yeah! Good effort. Good effort. And I, I said he had a chance because he throws it so hard. He has the opportunity to make those pins come out of the back there. And that one just came in front of the seven pin. We're going to have to check that 10 pin for a Can laceration. <laughs> now, is that the 10 pin? Yeah, that, it, yeah the sweep didn't get it. We're going to have to have it the, the, removed the, from that no, left channel. They're going to take that 10 pin to a wake right now. <sighs> Another good shot. Come on. So after starting with Four strikes, it goes spare, open frame for Sean Rash. It's amazing how well he's bowled, considering how fidgety is he's been through six frames. Probably about the fourth instance already where he's had to kind of pull back at some point. There he goes. Bounces back. Sean's parents in attendance. Gene and Diana all the way from Anchorage, Alaska. Nice people, very nice people. I talked with uh, Sean's dad a little bit uh, this morning before coming on the air. And right now, Norm Duke finds himself with a one pin lead because of the pocket 710 left by Sean Rash. Big opportunity for Duke in the seventh. And he capitalizes. What a run at the end of the last season. He rates it as the number one set of moments in his career. He's telling us last night, quote, you know, I didn't think the game of bowling could give me that feeling anymore. And he was joking with us, saying, you know, I'd call Randy every day after winning that U.S. Open. Randy, I won the U.S. Open. Randy, I won the U.S. Open. Get off the phone, Norm. <laughs> I, got, I got to spend time with the kids. What well, was the one tournament that he most coveted? Two in a row. And there's your adjustment. You know, it looked like he moved a bit inside and just picked his speed up a little bit. Norm Duke has made a fortune playing that part of the lane, keeping his hand behind the bowling ball and just that end over end really soft roll. Rash, a two time All American in 02 and 03 for the Shockers. His third season as an exempt bowler. Oof. And again, another good shot, but because of the velocity and amount of revolutions that Sean Rash is putting on the bowling ball, that, that ball is coming in at such an angle, that's why he left such a violent ringing 10. Norm Duke, much softer with the speed, keeps the pins a little bit lower, but watch just how fast the six goes around the 10. And now, Sean Rash finds himself in a very precarious situation and one that he's not accustomed to. He's trailing in this match. Again, Rash undefeated in singles competition on television, 7-0. and It's going to be awfully tough to get to 8-0 and at this point. His last four frames, spare, open, strike, spare. Cha-ching. Those days. Another shot clock violation, another $500. We are now up to $1,600 in this one game. Not out of it yet. 
I'll tell you what, with the exception of the one shot that went high, he's he's hit the pocket every ball and done extremely know. well. And he gives himself a chance by striking in the ninth frame. Great shot. He can now strike Great out in the tenth to shoot 236. Norm Duke is only at a 227 pace right now. But if he strikes out, he'll be at 257. And he will not strike and, out. And this time he doesn't trip the four pin. Look a little bit soft out of his hand. And now we have a possibility of a tie. That four pin has been an issue for him. He left it in the second. He had two trip four strikes in the third and the fifth and leaves it again here in the ninth. Norm Dick needs to strike out the 10th frame to force Sean Rash to strike out the 10th frame. This is getting good, folks. We have the po Sorry, Rob, we have the possibility of sudden death here in our opening match, the PBA World Championships. Norm Duke has won five majors, two of them last season. Well, you like your money on this guy in this type of situation. Yeah, and I think he's on his good lane. I think he likes this lane. He's made the adjustment now, and I think he's found a home. As you see, that ball is just buried, high flush, right into the 1-3. It has been nothing but strikes on this right lane. Another, and that's the big one. Coming through in the clutch, and all three just mirrored shots. Whenever you see that walk away to the right, you know it's a good thing. So Randy set the stage for Rash. What does he have to do? Three in the tenth, anything less, Norm Duke advances. And another. It's only appropriate to take your time. <laughs> It's like we're running a telethon here. We should have a tote board behind Rash and all the money that he's going to be contributing to the PVA fund. But every time he's taken a shot clock violation, he's struck. Except for there, when he needed it most. And his first loss ever on television due to bad pin carry. That's a pretty good shot there. He leaves a solid nine. Norm Duke moves on. Watch this. The bowling ball is going to go right past the nine pin. Bang! That's all that power, speed, and revolutions. Sometimes it can hurt you. In this match, it did. So history is still alive for Norm Duke. He is one win away from becoming the first on PBA Tour history to win three consecutive majors. As Sean Rash, the local product, bowls out. Nothing to be ashamed of, pulled a great game. 236, 215, your final nine strikes for Duke in that semifinal. So now he's gonna have to sit and wait to find his competition. Steve Jarris or Chris Barnes. A storm in Norman rolls on. 
And when we return, history takes center stage. Dick Weber from 65, Bo Burton live, and the all-time top 50 player list begins to be unveiled. Welcome you back to Wichita, Kansas, North Rock Lanes, the 12th PBA event they've hosted, going all the way back to 1970 in the Centennial Open. And while we're flashing back, well, let's go back a couple more years. 1965, the Thunderbird Open held here in Wichita, and the legendary Dick Weber taking on some guy named Nelson Burton Jr. Have you ever heard of him, Randy? Yes, I have. <laughs> Big fan, um, too. Two future Hall of Famers and Dick Weber winning at 218-177 to win his 14th PBA title. Even picked up that 5-7 split to boot. And we welcome you back inside live here at North Rock Lanes. ESPN's continuing live coverage of the PBA World Championship. Bo Burton was just 22 when Mr. Weber won that tournament. And if you had to ask bowling fans how they remember Bo Burton best by, it would not be the Buddy Holly glasses. It would be either his 18 career titles, including the 1978 U.S. Open. They might also add his 23 seasons as part of ABC's coverage of the PBA Tour, I think. Uh, that, that's where I remember you. I'm, I'm a little bit younger than I probably need to be over here, but uh, I'll tell you, sitting next to you, Bo, I, I'm... I'm learning bowling through osmosis. Just having you here. It's wonderful to have you here. Well, Rob, don't uh, cut yourself short. You're very knowledgeable. I watch the telecast all the time. Uh, last week it was a great show with LeBron James setting it up in the ninth frame for Jason Couch to put it away against Chris Barnes and Chris Paul. So good stuff, and I'm looking forward to this season. Uh, we're going to put you to work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, it's quite an honor just to be sitting next to you, especially in, in this environment. Um, let's talk about the new changes that are taking place this season on the PBA Tour. Uh, we've got some format changes, some event changes. There's going to be a tournament where the players can only use a plastic bowling ball, uh, an ultimate shootout scoring event. Give us your thoughts. Well, Randy, uh, I always enjoy the PBA Tour, but what Tom Clark and Fred Schreier have come up with this year is very innovative. It's going to be great for the fans and for the players, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Number one, it gives you guys a little more to talk about. Number two, I like the ultimate shootout. You know, all of us at home, and I still bowl league, bowl on house conditions if you have to and the house conditions uh, are 20 to 30 pins easier than the PBA Tour. I've been both places, and it's tough out here. What they're going to do is put out the house shot the pros will go wild. They'll just knock 300s to death out here. And you know what I like? The plastic ball tournament. The plastic ball, we're going to run the top 50 of all times here during this next 11 weeks. The plastic ball era is where many of those top 50 players came from. They bowled in the late 60s with the plastic ball, the 70s, on into the 80s. It's going to be a great season. And, Bo, I've bowled with you uh, just, it, as recently as about a month ago. You still got a kid. <laughs> Jupiter, Florida Bowling Leagues. Watch out for the ringer over here to our side. We're going to uh, we're gonna put you to work. I know you're doing a lot of work for the women's tour, but that microphone is going to be put to good use. Uh, tell us your involvement with the PBA this season. Well, basically, Rob, we put together through uh, the writers and bowling writers and the players over the last year or so the top 50 players in their opinion of the last 50 years. The PBA started in 1958. The first term was an all-beat. Now we have the 2008 and 2009 season. For the next 11 weeks, we have a special series to commemorate all the top 50 players. And this week, we're starting with the number 46 player, Gary Dickinson. So all you fans at home, for the next 11 weeks, and today, watch and enjoy. At number 46 in our countdown is Gary Dickinson. The lanky Hall of Famer had amassed eight titles in his career. The most important of those was a victory in the 1983 U.S. Open, which would be his only win in a major championship. Dickinson, a likable player, as evidenced by his three Steve Nagy Sportsmanship Awards, also enjoyed great success on the PBA Senior Tour, where he collected 12 titles and was named Player of the Year three times. We begin at number 50 with Bob Strampy, one of the best ever from Detroit, Michigan, tough as nails in the clutch. And number 49, Mika Koivuniemi, the Big Finn has won two majors. He's a former player of the year and bowled the 17th televised 300 game. The analytical Tommy Hudson at 48, ahead of his time with that release. 
At 47, Barry Asher, the top five most talented players of all time. If the shot was in the deep inside part of the lane, that tournament was coming down to three players, Jim Godman, Don Johnson, and Barry Asher. The picture of consistency, Gary Dickinson at number 46. Never bowled poorly, not flashy, let his game and his ball do the talking. And at 45, Johnny Gunther, really tough in match play, and as dangerous as he was, he never lost his composure. Very strong mentally, and bowled the second televised 300 game. Again, our thanks to Bo Burton. Look forward to hearing him throughout our season's worth of broadcast. Up next, semifinal number two, Steve Jarris duels the reigning PBA Player of the Year and former Wichita resident, Chris Barnes. Welcome back to Wichita, Kansas, North Rock Lane, the first PBA event here in Wichita since the 02 PBA Wichita Open. Norm Duke waiting in the wings and seeking major career title number six, which would put him just one behind Walter Ray Williams Jr. And you look at the leader there, Earl Anthony, six of them at this event, the great Mike Albee, Pete Weber. You know, the thing that all five of these players will have in common, in my opinion, after the end of January, they'll all be Hall of Famers. How could you deny Norm Duke? You can't. It's impossible. So the PBA World Championship today, the first of four majors this season. Here's a look at the PBA Grand Slam. All of them you can see live on ESPN, the Tournament of Champions, the Masters, and the U.S. Open from New Jersey. So we begin semifinal number two. There's a look at Steve Jarris from Yorkville, Illinois, the western suburbs of Chicago, as he takes on Chris Barnes. Jarris is up first. <laughs> Nipped that pocket and drops nine. And remember, we talked about it at the start of the show, the, the multiple angles that this oil pattern affords the players. You can see that Steve Jarris even though he doesn't hook it quite a bit, he's playing a little bit more towards the second arrow or inside, just inside the second arrow. I think you're going to see Chris Barnes playing even deeper than that. Throws that one in. Jarris, his 25th year on the tour. That is half the PBA's history. I'm sure he's glad I did the math for him on that one. <laughs> Here is Chris Barnes from Double Oak, Texas. Went to college here at Wichita and resided here for eight years post school. A little heavy on that one. And Chris Barnes already in front of the bar return to play that deep inside angle. And I think this is what makes this pattern so great. There are multiple angles that you can play early in the week during qualifying, the majority of the players did play inside. Lane could get very dry. This is a worn synthetic surface. Take a look at our lumber liquidators, know the wood. And again, a, a worn synthetic surface, it's an older surface. And what happens when you get an older surface, you get what's called a predominant track area. And right around the second arrow on the right side of the lane, the lanes are going to get very worn because that's where the majority of your league bowlers and your house bowlers play. When the pros see that, it's a high friction zone. Leaves the 10 this time, so no strikes yet here in semifinal number two. Uh. You know, if you're wondering, well, why, why isn't Chris and Steve Jarris playing where Norm Duke played in the previous match where he shot 230? Are you wondering that, uh, Rob? I was. Well, I'm going to tell you why after this spare. Wonderful. They can't play there because, first of all, it's, it's, a bit, it's a very precise shot, and nobody plays that angle better than Norm Duke except for maybe one other guy on the planet, and that would be Walter Ray. Here is Jarris, seven PBA Tour titles, one major. He won the 2005 Tournament of Champions. Oh 
still seeking a strike. And we talked about Sean Rash in semifinal number one, where he was in the first event of last season, which happened to be a major as well. Ditto for Jarris, who came in second at the USBC Masters in Milwaukee, Wisconsin last year, falling to Sean Rash, 245, 269. Steve Jarris has had a very nice career out here. A very unassuming guy, very quiet, flies under the radar. But he's won seven times out here, including one major. Underrated career, and you know, he told us yesterday he has his eye on the Hall of Fame. And we asked him his goals. You know, I want to win another major, I want to qualify for the Hall of Fame, and I want to keep my job. And you know, in this economy, that's a, that's a wonderful goal. Keep your job. His last practice ball that he threw on the left lane, he left the 2-8-10 split, he came in light. The first ball of this match, he came in light. Steve Jarris looking down at which ball should I throw and where should I put my feet. This is going to be an educated guess. Through two frames, four spares total. Make it the opportunity for five spares now. And I think this is what makes this pattern tough. It's, you know, as soon as you let one go a little bit to the right, it doesn't recover. The next time you're up on that same lane, subconsciously, you don't want to give it that room to the right, so you end up pulling it or tugging it, missing left of target, and that's what Steve just did in that shot. And most of the time when you miss left of target this week, it didn't hold pocket. It's a lot like your golf game. You have kind of one, one bad swing, one funky swing, and you start tweaking, and you have to retweak and continue tweaking. You lose, you lose your focus, you lose your game. <laughs> well, after you shank one or hit a hosel rocket, it's pretty tough to pull the trigger on the next shot. Go on. Misses the pocket. Yikes. We talked about that worn track area right around the second arrow. If you notice that this shot here, it gets right or wide of that friction zone, and it'll never recover from that spot. So, in essence, Chris Barnes threw it through his hook point into the area where Norm Duke was playing in the last match. Yeah, it was just a bad shot. It was wide of target. And Chris is really arcing at playing the big rainbow shot from in. And he knows he's got to get it to that spot for it to pick up. And, and, and when I say that spot, I mean the friction zone down the lane. But that ball was wide of target. And it would never recover, leaving the wash out. And it's an open frame. First open frame of the semifinal. And you saw Chris whip that towel down. Looked like that was going to be the toss, and it kind of bailed out at the last second. And, and did you notice that the ball kind of rolled out and stopped right before it got in front of the head pin? Watch the ball reaction or the ball motion. Now it gets wide, it looks like it's almost too far to the right. All of a sudden, it tries to come back and then straightens out. That's called rolling out. That's when your roll is too far or too much forward, and there's too much friction cr being created. If Chris Barnes shows the same shot and gets his wrist to roll around the side a bit more, he'll create more axis rotation, and that ball will continue. Here's a look at his wife, Linda Barnes. Extremely accomplished bowler in her own right. Nine-time Team USA member has won three U.S. Amateur Championships as well as a World Cup Championship. They met here in Wichita and got engaged at a Wichita Bowling Center. Nothing says romance like an engagement at a Wichita Bowling Center. Now Jarris uh, has been given openings and is not, not taking them. And Jarris isn't comfortable with his ball reaction either. No. If you notice that Steve Jarris is a straight down and in player, he is versatile. He can hook it and go around it a little, more, uh, a little bit. He can go straight when he wants to. But if you notice his entire zone where he's playing is a good five to six boards left of where Norm Duke played him. If Norm Duke is watching this match right now, what is he thinking? He's salivating right now. He's, he really is salivating because he knows he can play an area of the lane that the other two players can't get to. Huge advantage for Norm. That's if it holds up and it's still there when he comes back for the title match. 
four frames, four spares for Jerris. Barnes, four frames, have gone spare, spare, open, spare. The key point, no strikes, people. Still leaves the 10. Even Sean Rash with the high rev rate and hook that he has was playing farther right than where Steve Jarris is playing. Watch this shot here. It's right around the 14th board going out just a little bit. Again, playing that high friction area, the track area. And all Steve can muster is nine spare. The good news, he did hit the pocket on that shot. And Jarris has never beaten any of the other three semifinalists on today's show. It's two and one on television last season. All three of those matches coming at the season opening USBC Masters in Milwaukee. Here's Chris Barnes, the reigning PBA player of the year. Better. Finally! Now, there was a little more axis rotation on that shot, and it continued. Ten shots. Ten shots for one strike. Nice now, going. Chris Barnes has been the comeback kid the last few days. It's Come from behind to win each of his match play rounds this week. Down 0-3 to, to Tom Baker, down 0-2 to Jason Belmonte, down 1-3 to Todd Book, but no time to make up ground in a, in a one-match semifinal. This cat's got nine lives. I mean, just when it looked like he was out of every match, except for the first one where he swept Dino, he came back. So it looked like he was out of this match, but suddenly back-to-back -back jacks have you in the lead. We're nipping at it. Chris Barnes and his road roommate Nika Koivu Miemi have a new bet. We'll tell you about it next. The Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour on ESPN is brought to you by Bayer. The more you know, the more you trust Bayer by Prescription Flomax, by CLR, CLR, all kinds of dirty, one kind of clean, and by the United States Bowling Congress, ensuring the integrity and protecting the future of the sport of bowling. Bowl with us. We welcome you back to Wichita, Kansas, packed house here, and next week we go to one of our favorite Venues. Thunder Alley in Omaha, Nebraska plays host to the tour for the second consecutive season as Mike Scroggins looks to defend his championship in the first of the named pattern championships. It's also the first of seven events in the PBA Women's Series. Following that, we head to Olympia Lanes in Hammond, Indiana. Michael Haugen Jr., the defending champ. This telecast will also feature a championship match between two PBA Senior Tour players. Just a few lanes outside of our set. There is Norm Duke staying loose, getting warm, and getting set to try and win his third consecutive major title. And as you said, Randy, he has to be salivating at the issues that Chris Barnes and Steve Jarris are having right now. Well, Chris Barnes now appears to be getting a little bit uh, more comfortable playing that deep inside line, but I still think that at this point, you would have to give the advantage to Norm Duke. Jarris still looking for his first strike here in the sixth. Give. Not enough of a love tap there on the 10. Steve still struggling to try to find the right combination to get his ball to face the one three pocket a little bit stronger. And he's nowhere nowhere near being out of this match. And just because he hasn't struck yet, he's staying clean, he's staying in the game. You know, the count is all even, even though Chris Barnes is working on a double. He was telling us last night he was trying to tilt it in this week. Can you explain that? Well, at times he would tilt it in, meaning he would try to get the ball to rotate a little bit more sideways as opposed to rolling more end over end. And that was to get it to read the pattern depending on how he was playing the, the oil pattern. Uh, he's, like I said, he's versatile. He can do a lot of different things with a bowling ball. There it is! 
And see, there's another move, Rob. He, he moved inside and went more up the back and kind of rolled it out and chipped the four. The Steve Jarris can bowl. Let's make no mistake about it. This young man has bowled 300 on television, and when he gets locked in, he strikes a lot. Chris Barnes, well documented last season of his problems on television. He was five and six on television last season, but got out of the funk in the later stages of the season, then really just kept on rolling well. Here he is looking for three in a row. Pretty good pitch there by Chris Barnes, leaving the blowout seven. And this angle that Chris is playing is all about ball speed, location, and rotation. He told us last night his goal this season is to try and enjoy it a lot more. This is a tough match to enjoy the experience. Well, you know, he said that he doesn't feel like he has to prove anything anymore since winning Player of the Year honors. He doesn't have to prove anything to anyone. And now he feels like he can go out and enjoy it. But, you know, it's easier said than done. There we go. I, I just think that as good as this guy is, you know, he's performed poorly on television. If he ever turns that around, look out. And, and the only reason why Chris struggles on TV is it's all mental. I think he overanalyzes uh, uh, the situations at times, and he outthinks himself. Jarris working off his first strike of this match. Yeah, that had no chance from that angle. Steve's just got himself in a bad spot. He had uh, a so-so look in terms of ball reactions in practice leading up to this match. He knew he was in trouble, and that's a very lonely place to be right before you get on. This is how you convert the 2-4-10. Get the ball left of the two pin, slide it over into the 10, the ball will take out the four. A dead eye on the two. So his first open frame as we enter the foundation frame right now. Jarris down 11. Yeah. Needed that. Yeah. Needed that to stay alive here at the PBA World Championship. And they mean it when they say World Championship. 12 countries represented. Countries like Malaysia, Colombia, Mexico, Iceland, Thailand, Australia, Poland here as well. And PBA officials hinting that this tournament might even go international in the near future, as in an international host. And Chris is going to be really happy with that result because he threw it too hard and it tried to go right through that spot. Only leaving the two pin is a very good break for Chris Barnes. He'll convert here, and if he strikes out in the 10th frame, if he gets all three, he'll shoot 202 and shut out Steve Jarris. Jarris can max out at only 201. So here. Here's where you regroup mentally and you try to get yourself calmed down and slow up so that ball will read that spot. Tough for Jarris to watch this one. Again, Barnes, the comeback kid the last few days here. And this would be yet another example. softer speed and it'll read that friction zone down the lane at about 40 feet. 
Chris Barnes looking to duplicate that shot two more times. Remember, the best Steve Jarrett can shoot, 201. Barnes trailed through the first six frames, tied it in the seventh, took his first lead in the eighth. Needs two strikes to move on to the final versus Norm Duke. shot that had a little bit more lock, a little bit more hit, and a little less speed. And watch the 10 pin, the pin all the way to your right of your screen gets snapped out right there by the six. He opened up the first four frames with three spares in an open frame. Since then, it's been everything strike oriented outside of two spares. That came in the seventh and the ninth. Strike here, he moves on to the final to face Norm Duke. enough to move on. Jarrett's rolling out in the 10th. And for two consecutive seasons, Steve Jarrett finds himself on the losing end in a major to start the season, but I'm sure there's a lot of guys on tour that would trade places with him right now. There's a Wichita State shocker lid. Barnes graduated from Wichita State. He was an All-American in 90 and 92. Four years in college here. Eight years after that. So it's a great place to live. Love the people. Probably the best bowling community maybe anywhere. He is right at home in Wichita. And what a final we have set for you. Chris Barnes beats Jarris. Moves on. Next up, Stormin. Norman Duke. Welcome you back to the great state of Kansas. We are in Wichita for ESPN's continuing coverage of the PBA World Championship, North Rock Lanes. Your host. And we are closing in on the final between Duke and Barnes. This week on Monday Night Football, Peyton Manning and Reggie Wayne lead the 3-3 three three Indianapolis Colts against the only remaining undefeated team, the Titans, led by Kerry Collins. Yeah, that is not a typo. Kerry Collins getting it done for Tennessee. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Who do you like? I always like Peyton Manning and the Colts, even though they have only won three. I'll They're tell struggling you a bit, buddy. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Time for our Geico Championship recap, and we begin with semi number one, Norm Duke taking down Sean Rash. And Norm Duke needed all three in the 10th frame to force Sean Rash to get all three. Sean Rash stone nine. He loses for the first time. Duke moves on. Semifinal number two, Chris Barnes, Steve Jarris. Same scenario. Chris Barnes needed all three in the 10th to win by one and shut out Jarris. He gets it. Chris Barnes moves on and looks to become a triple crown winner. So the final is set. Chris Barnes versus Norm Duke for the 2008 PBA World Championship. Duke holds a two to one advantage over Barnes on television, but this will be their first meeting since 2003. back inside North Rock Lanes for the finals of the 2008 PBA World Championship. Norm Duke looking to become the first bowler in PBA history to win three straight majors. Rock Stone, Randy Peterson, glad you're spending part of your Sunday afternoon with us. 
Norm Duke, the defending champion, the last player to successfully defend the PBA World Championship, was the great Earl Anthony, who accomplished it in 1983. He actually did it, he actually won it three times in a row, twice. 73, 74, and 75, 81, 82, and 83. Leaves the 10. Really struggled in the beginning of his semifinal round, getting his first strike in the fifth. Yeah, but look at this. He's moved some 20 boards to the right. He struck out in the 10th frame of the last match to win and makes this gigantic move against Norm Duke. We're going to have to wait and see and watch how this plays out after for Chris Barnes. A very interesting. Very daring move, in my opinion. I think he's taking Norm Duke on, on Norm Duke's turf. He's playing the outside part of the lane where Norm's playing. That's Norm's turf. He had the whole inside part of the lane to himself. And the goal of that is to eat up that part of the oil? I think, I, I don't know if it's... I don't know if it's Chris Barnes trying to beat Norm at his own game, or if Chris feels that by playing there, you know, Norm's shot may get uh, kind of fishy or maybe go away after, uh, you know, a few shots. But why would you play out there unless you had a good look to get to the pocket? Obviously, Barnes feels he has a good look to the pocket. We know, or at least we anticipate, Norm Duke will have a good look at the pocket. So Norm starts with a strike. The effects of Chris's alteration to his attack may not be seen yet for another couple frames. But it is not bothering Norm one bit. Again, Duke rolled through Sean Rash, 236, 215 in semifinal number one. It was having some problems with the four pin and got that figured out. Here's Barnes. Looking for his third major. Oh boy. That one never hooked in and missed the pocket. <laughs> you know, I don't missed like to second by. guess these players out here because they're the greatest in the world, but I'm, I've got to question this move and this moving to the outside part of the lane when it looked like he was getting dialed in in the middle part of the lane. This is where he played the last match. Tenth frame, look at that. That was the, the shot that locked up the match. Let's go to one, two, four. You know, the only thing that I can come up with, Rob, is that he felt playing that inside line that whatever he could bowl from in there wouldn't be good enough to beat Norm. Duke has been strike, strike. Barnes has been spare, spare. Bowler of the Year in 1992 for Wichita State. Leaves himself with another challenge. Sensitive area of the lane out there, and Norm Duke just proves with every shot that he throws why he's so great. That shot there by Chris Barnes, just a fraction off, pays the maximum penalty, leaving the 4-9 pocket split. This is everything. Now, he bowled a lot here in his college days. This was kind of his home center, and he told us, you know, it probably helped him get through qualifying with all those slow starts. You know, he, he surprised himself by how many pairs he remembered from his college days, but this is a start to, to not remember for Chris Barnes. Spare, spare, open frame at 43. Here's Duke looking for three straight strikes to start it off. Got it. Look at the expression on Norm's face, the reaction from that strike. This is what, in my opinion, makes him one of the greatest ever mentally. He just took advantage of an open frame given by his opponent with another strike to make it three in a row, and Norm treated it like it was nothing. 
starting to pull away. The lead is at 37 after three. We begin the fourth. Wichita. Duke putting the world of hurt on Barnes. The conclusion of the 2008 PBA World Championship win and return. Duke closing in on three straight majors. $50,000 and a two-season tour exemption will go to the winner of today's 2008 PBA World Championship. Norm Duke firmly in control. Our thanks go out to Mike Light and Frank DeSocio, the North Rock Lane's GM and owner. Wonderful hosts all week for us here in Wichita. You won't meet two nicer gentlemen right there. Well, I met you. Well, besides me. Yeah. Right now, this gentleman in big trouble. Spare, spare, open frame as he begins his fourth. Boy, did he need that. Now, Chris Barnes did play this part of the lane at times during the week. So this isn't exactly foreign to him. I'm a bit surprised that that ball actually rebounded from that spot. But I will tell you this, it better be out of your hand really, really good. It better be pure for it to return. Otherwise, it could be zero real easy from there. Well, Norm Duke has epitomized pure here in the championship final. Four frames, four strikes. Barnes has work to do. Down 47 as we begin the fifth. Boy, that took a hard left-hand turn. Very sensitive at that part of the lane, and I think it's, it's magnified when you have a higher rev rate and more rotation, a la Chris Barnes. Norm Duke, not a whole lot. Oh. Oh. That is a punch to the gut. You are trying to collect your breath right now for Chris Barnes. Now I was going to say, on 12, please. as Norm Duke takes a re-rack on line 12, Norm Duke's ball doesn't read and is not rack as sensitive 12, to please. the old pattern as Chris Barnes because his rev rate is lower. And then Chris Barnes gets up and misses the four pin. 
We urge you to head over to PBA.com and check out the website's all new look and features. The Extra Frame section has added live streaming of PBA competition. Right now, Extra Frame subscribers can submit a question to the mailbag and they can check in after the show to see if we ask your question to today's winner, which is looking more and more like it's going to be that man. There's the fist pump. Warren Duke with his Tiger Woods like approach to major champions or to major championships is halfway home to winning this event and making history. Now that reaction, a bit of a juxtaposition from the recent PBA ad campaign that you may have seen on ESPN where Mr. Duke goes a little John Lennon on us. Have you seen that yet? The 1970s flashback celebrating yes. the 50th anniversary? Yes, I have. It is wonderful television. Unreal. Keep it going, Norm. History in the making. Halfway to a perfect game. Norm Duke, one of the greatest of all time. is in the 240s. The best Chris Barnes can shoot is 221. So that would mean that Chris would have to strike out from here on out. He could he, he would have to be perfect and he would have to hope for Norm Duke to make a couple of mistakes along the way. I don't see that happening. than that kind of final for Chris Barnes. And again, I think you have to go back and question the big move to the outside part of the lane. I mean, he's, sh he's shooting in the 170s right now, and where he was before, I think he could... Hey, what do you know? I think he could have squeezed out a 220 or 230 to do it really, really well. If nothing else, he would have kept some pressure 10, 4, on his 9, opponent. 10. Norm Duke, six frames, six strikes. Last season, coming off... Uh, an injury filled season on the verge of losing his exemption. He rallied, won the Denny's World Championship in Indianapolis, and then the 65th edition of the Denny's U.S. Open in March in New Jersey, looking now to try and win his third straight major. It's never been done in PBA history. Seven for seven. Well, he's both 300 on television before, did it against Walter Ray Williams Jr. Did that in January of 2003, and there have only been 18 televised 300 games. Two of those have been in title matches. We begin the eighth. This match is over. Norm Duke is only thinking of one thing, and that's to bowl another perfect game. I do not care for that 10 pin, Randy. Not one bit. What a performance. Again, a Tiger Woods like performance for Norm Duke, staying in the moment, just being so focused. It's absolutely overpowering. A couple of weeks ago, we're practicing back home in Claremont, and Norm's made the comment I just don't feel that well. Uh, I don't feel sharp. My game feels kind of rusty. Wins the first tournament of the year, the World Championships. Well, he was having some health issues, too. He's trying to downplay that, but he was kind of fighting some ailments, and you know, his off season, you thought it'd be a little bit light, but he had to do a ton of clinics. Because he accepted so many clinic invitations when he was struggling last season. He said to himself, yeah, I gotta pay some bills, so in the off season, I'm gonna do these clinics, and next thing you know, he wins it. He's got his tour card, but he's still signed up for all these clinics that he had to do. He told us the highlight, a vacation to the Wisconsin Dells, five days of water slides and golfing. That sounds awesome to me. There may have been some cheese curds and beer involved as well, which makes it sound even better. And Barnes, for the first time in the final, gets back-to-back -back jumps. And not to beat a dead horse, but he moves back inside, although you know it is a different ball that he was using in that first game against Jarris, or his first match, 
against Jarris and immediately throws a double. I think Chris Barnes will be questioning this move for some time. We saw Duke get awfully emotional at the end of last year winning the U.S. Open. And it looks like it's starting to come out here again. Well, Norm's a very genuine, caring guy. And I, I don't make it any secret that Norm's a dear friend of mine, and I've got a lot of respect for him. But he's a very caring person, and he's a very passionate person, and that's why you see the tears of joy and what he's accomplished. No other player in the history of this tour, the PBA Tour, has ever won three consecutive majors. Can we put him in that Hall of Fame right now? You have to wait till January, my friend. No, I said right now. Let, let's well, go, let's go, get, a, let's go get a notary agent or something. Get this done. Tremendous performance by that man right there. So for the first time in PBA history, we have a bowler who has won three consecutive majors. Norm's do. What an exhilarating performance today. Thank you all. Took the semifinal 236, 215 over Sean Rash. He's already wrapped up this title in his last toss. Norm's going to show you a little versatility. By Fitting. Yeah. Yeah. Fitting strike. Great ball. Barnes will roll out as Duke continues his celebration. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for the sign. Thank you. His sixth major title now tied for fifth most in PBA history with Don Carter in his 100th singles television you sit down, sir? appearance today. Now. He wins his third world championship in 2000. Won it last season and this season as well. Norm defends the crown. Barnes, the reigning player of the year, finishes second. Norm lift it, exhale, and enjoy. We begin in a historic PBA season with history, courtesy of Norm Duke. We'll hear from him when we return. The Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour on ESPN is brought to you by Etonic, the official footwear of the PBA. By Denny's, where America's favorite breakfast is now available to go. Real breakfast 24-7. By Geico. 15 minutes could save 15% on your car insurance. Visit Geico.com. And by Lumber Liquidators, hardwood flooring for less. When asked last night about his thoughts on winning three straight majors for the first time in the history of the PBA, he said, quote, zero thoughts, absolutely none. Not anymore. Randy Peterson standing by with our winner, Norm Duke. Norm Duke rewrites the record books once again. And Norm, congratulations. Thank you. There's only one question. Um, the only player in the history of the PBA to win three consecutive majors. Talk about your emotions. Well, you know, I, that hasn't hit me yet, Randy, because I was, I was focused on winning the world championship. And, and when I heard you say that a minute ago, uh, it kind of, you know, choked me up. But to think that no other player gets to experience these emotions is, is something that I, you know, I almost wish they, they could so they'll know what I'm going through. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. It's a dream. It's just a dream. And I want to thank my family for, uh, for being with me the whole time. Uh, they, they knew what this meant to me. Thanks, Karen, and thanks, Brandon, my mom. 
Norm, we got to talk uh, real quickly about your strategy on the lanes. We saw guys playing all over the place. Chris Barnes started in, moved out. You stuck with one strategy. Talk about it. Well, you know, the guys are getting real good, and, and Chris is – exceptional from in and out and the fact that he could leapfrog like that is a testament to his ability and then when he moved back out against me I, I figured him for 240 or 50 I really did he's that good out there and then you know Sean Rash did the same thing he went outside and he played away from his strength uh, those guys are, are getting a lot better at that and and you know I was fortunate I'm the one that got the strikes they they left solid nines and seven tens congratulations Norm Thank what you. a great day you, Norm Buke's gonna go down as one of the greatest of all time And this is a guy who really thought his bowling career was going to come to an end last season due to injuries and lack of results. Oof, what a turnaround. Next week, we had one of our, our favorite venues, Thunder Valley, or Thunder Alley in Omaha, Nebraska, live coverage, one Eastern on ESPN for the Pepsi Viper Championship. Norm Duke dispatched Sean Rash, 236, 215 in semi number one. And then just destroyed Chris Barnes in the final. 259 through 189. His first seven frames were nothing but strikes in the championship match. Norm Duke, the first bowler in PBA history to win three straight majors. For Randy Peterson and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. We'll see you next week in Omaha.